Hey everybody, Joe here, Bad Advice for Good Times, and we are back with another episode of the vlog dedicated to celebrating the creative people who bring the Lovecraft mythos to life. This is Lovecrafting. So, like many people in the Lovecraft community here at Bad Advice for Good Times, we are avid collectors of Lovecraft-related memorabilia, primarily books. As you can see, I have a uh, pretty, uh, pretty good collection of paperbacks, some hardbacks, some toys, that sort of thing. It is by no means uh, a robust collection. Some people that I've talked to, some people that I know have ridiculous collections. Um, this whole shelf behind me would be covered in toys and games and books and so on and so forth. Um, comes with the territory. But lately, people have been asking, what is the most uh, prized piece in my collection? And, um, you know, it's funny because I have a lot of books that have a lot of sentimental value. And some of them have uh, a uh, monetary value as well. The most I've ever paid for a paperback, probably about a hundred bucks, which at the time was way too much for, for me, but I just, I couldn't, you know, I had to, I had to have it. <laughs> stupid but um and i've seen paperbacks for you know five six hundred dollars not even first editions just you know regular editions people people pay a pretty penny i mean i would love to have those editions but i would probably never take them off the shelf the thing about these paperbacks is that i do actually still read them even the ones in plastic i you know pop them out and and, and leaf through it just for the the smell and the aroma of uh, the old paper and um yeah, it's a, it's a little weird, a little, uh, little bit of a fetish. But I actually don't have any uh, any of the original uh, Arkham Press stuff or, or, or any of that. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, I, it's nobody cares about what I'm saying. But I do have a piece that is worth a lot of money and has a lot of sentimental value to me. And that is this one right here. A Lovecraft Retrospective. Artists Inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, this is a book that sells for anywhere between $400 and $1,300 online. So between A Books and Amazon Books, you can you can try and find this piece. Um, there weren't many printed, and they will never be printed again. This bad boy is amazing. This is a truly unique art book. Many of the works in here have never been published before. They're printed on multi-page layouts. So like uh, you open it up and they fold out. I'm going to show you how that works. There's a thumbnail gallery that like you can actually go through the whole thing. And, uh, and there's a, you can actually go through the whole thing and pick which pieces you want to look at. There's an overview of the entire contents of the book of all the artists. But the most important thing about this piece is that because of its sheer size and complexity, it will never be printed again. Never again. That's it. It's kind of like a Necronomicon for Lovecraft-inspired art. It is really unique, and it is really exceptional. Totally exciting to look at. So let's take a look inside. It has this gorgeous black slipcase, monolithic <laughs> in its nature. It's wild. Um, and you can see the side, beautiful, I hold it right, so you can see from the side, look at this beautifulness, this is a hefty piece of work, and let's slip it out of the slip case, that's the wrong side, okay, let's slip it out this way, let's slip it out this way. Ooh, go like this. Shh. Look at this bad boy. This is a beautiful book. And uh, I'll, I'm going to set it down over there. And we'll take a look. It's heavy. Too heavy for nerds like me. I think I hurt myself opening the book. Seriously. I would never leave this on my coffee table. There's no way. I don't trust 
any of my friends to be around this book. No way.
Dude. But we have work by Sean Gentry, Lee Brown Co., Howard V. Brown, Andrew Brosnich, Harry Furman, James Wilcox, B. Goldschlager. We've also got contributions from and essays from Robert M. Price, Goldschlager. It has a preface by Stuart Gordon, an introduction by Harlan Ellison, an afterwards by Thomas Ligotti. You got early art by Virgil Finley, EC Comics, Haynes Bach, Frank Upatel, Richard Taylor, Bernie Wrightson, Helmut Wentz, Bruce Pennington, Raymond Bayliss, John Stewart, Harry O. Morris, H. R. Geiger, Stephen Fabian, Michael Whelan, Ian Miller, Alan Kozowski, Les Edwards, Randy Broker, J. K. Potter, Tom Sullivan, Dave Carson, John Colthart, Jeff Remmer, Francois Lunet, John Jude Palancar, Bob Eggleton, Gabriel, 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 Gua, Guabriel. So check us out on Facebook, Twitter. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Remember to let us know people that you want to see, people that you want to hear us talk to. Um, if you have any hot tips on people that you think that we should share with the community, please leave a comment and let us know. Uh, this is what we're all about, connecting all the people within the Lovecraft community. Uh, share your articles, your music, your CDs, your movies, your films, your books, your fanzines, whatever you got, send it our way. We will talk about it. I promise you that. And if we don't get stuff to talk about, we are just going to share some of the items that we that we uh, order or that we get in. And um, I know exactly what this is. Open it up. Oh, yes. This is Notes from the Shadowed City, and um, it's actually uh, loosely Lovecraft related, but uh, 
The reason we picked it up is because it had come uh, some very high recommendation. And, you know, um, also Mike, you know, Mike Magnolia has talked about this, Dave McKean. I mean, this book is, is a gorgeous. Oh, the first opening page is, dare I say, Lovecraftian. But yeah, some of the illustrations in here are absolutely gorgeous. This is a super simple, beautifully illustrated book. Uh, it's a bit of a mix. It's, it's mythology and ancient gods and swords and cities that walk, um, masked swordsmen. It's really beautiful. This is by Jeffrey Allen Love. I don't know if there's a direct Lovecraft influence, but it is definitely interconnected to the... Uh, to the atmosphere and the tone and manner of, uh, of weird fiction, for sure. This is a beautiful book, people. Please, go check it out. Nice. And remember... Just because it has tentacles doesn't mean it's Lovecraftian.